Welcome to the Skip and Shannon Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. You can catch us Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on FS1. Here's what this podcast is all about. It's an unscripted, unfiltered, undisputed version of the day's show, and there is a lot to get into in today's podcast. Shannon says if you're in the NBA and want to play LeBron twice, you need to make it to the NBA Finals. Skip claims that Lonzo Ball has magic gifts and skills that Westbrook doesn't have. Chris Carter believes Tony Romo has the best chance in Houston. And Jay Glazer reveals what his Tom Brady Super Bowl jersey investigation has discovered. Plus, the March Madness devastation has already begun and Duke is feeling the upset. And one more thing before we get going, now that the combine is over and free agency is winding down, it's time for NFL fans to get ready for the draft. FS1 NFL insider Peter Schrager will release his two-round mock draft on FoxSports.com Tuesday morning. Catch Schrager on the herd later that day, breaking it down with Colin, and then head over to the FS1 Facebook page for a draft deep dive, live stream with Schrager. Peter is one of the most plugged-in reporters in the business. He's constantly talking to GMs, so it's easy. Let him make you smarter on the 2017 NFL draft. Remember, his mock draft debuts tomorrow on Fox. FoxSports.com. Check it out. Good morning, guys. We're joined by Jay Glazer. Jay is here with some exclusive details of Tom Brady's missing Super Bowl jersey. Mm -hmm. For those of you that forget, let's go back to the Super Bowl. Tom Brady and the Patriots made an amazing comeback, beating the Falcons 34-28. to After the game, Tom Brady could not find his jersey. Let's take a listen. Did anyone see it? Did you see it? Thanks, Jay. B, did someone take my jersey? I put it in my bag. I absolutely 100% put it in my bag. Someone took it, B. He said when he came back in, said we've been in here. He took his jersey off his pants and put it in his back. Come on, interview right now. I put it in here. Just put someone at the door, check every one of these meetings. No, but it was just. If anyone sees eBay. (laughs) Jay, welcome. (laughs) Where do we stand with the investigation? Well, he doesn't have to go on eBay anymore because the investigation now is leading to that jersey as well as his Super Bowl jersey from a couple of years ago going back to the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. And this story right here, if I came to you as a Hollywood script writer and said, yeah. here you go, you'd throw me out the door. Mm-hmm. Say, no, it's, there's no way this could happen. So here's actually what happened. The FBI and the NFL security, along with Patriots security, Houston PD, they actually went through all this video to try and track somebody down. Uh, We're actually trying to go through the same video as well. And they zeroed in on somebody, a person of interest. That person of interest, when I'm told, uh, is an international member of the media. Uh I don't believe he's actually a member of the media, but he was posing as a member of the international media. Right, Mm -hmm. got credentialed. Uh, It's been going on for quite some time. And he actually, from what I'm told, they have him going into the locker room right behind Bill Belichick, as if he's with the team, goes in there, loiters around for a little while, and is seen leaving the locker room. This is the video they're trying to to, uh, look at right now. Seen leaving a little bit later with something under his arm. He just goes in without anything under his arm, with your normal media backpack, comes out after with something, the backpack, plus something under his arm, leaves later on. Again, they've all zeroed in now, and they, from what I understand, Houston PD, I think, just put out that they were found down in Mexico um, and had to uh, deal with authorities there to try to get them back here on American soil. They had to authenticate them, make sure that this was actually Tom Brady's jerseys. And in fact, they were. And from what I understand, that they will be returned to the Patriots and Brady, I think, sometime this week. Wow. So not only did he have Super Bowl 51 jersey, mm-hmm. he all, also had Super Bowl 49 jersey. Well, I'm going to actually reveal something else now. Not only that, but the Denver Broncos believe that this same culprit may be responsible for taking Von Miller's helmet and or cleats from last year's Super Bowl as well. From what I know, it's not just Brady's jersey. There's other things. Uh, it is 
a very wild story. And again, whenever you're dealing with international soil, with anything overseas, uh, with somebody breaking into basically a Super Bowl locker room, which is supposed to be so incredibly secured, right. this story will just continue to get mm. crazier and crazier as the details come out. You did an amazing job on this. But my question is, in the big picture, biggest picture, why did the FBI then get right. involved? International soil, number one. Wow. Uh, and number two, Brady's jersey, just this one, is valued at a half a million dollars. So depending on what he has, and I've, I mm. was told by one source that it was several items, by somebody else that this guy had a treasury trove of stuff, somebody else had a few items, whatever it was. If you're talking six figures, seven figures of stolen goods going over, you know, the over uh, uh, into another country, the FBI yeah. obviously has to get involved. And mm. it was a collaborative effort. Right now, actually, um, I'm trying to get my hands on this video as well. And there's a lot of people, look, we have cameras down there at Fox, right? Mm. We did the game. There's a lot of people with cameras there just trying to zero in. I know that they have zeroed in on a person of interest um, who they think is the person, and they kind of collaborated together with the FBI and, and with uh, the Patriots and the league. Mm. But he, he would have had to to keep this in his possessions and store it in his basement or something because he could never get... It's like <laughs> right. if you steal a, a, a Monet or a Renoir, what are you going to do mm -hmm. with it? I mean, Skip, he has the authentic jersey. Tom Brady, you can, Tom Brady complained, the NFL complained that someone stole his jersey. So if you try and show it like, yeah, that's Tom right. Brady's Super Bowl jersey, what do you think the person's going to go do? Well, think about it. He didn't get rid of the, rid of the one from a couple years ago. Right. right? So he still had but that as well. And there's other things as well. Mexico? Yes. Yes. So is that considered a black market or I, I, I don't know. You know what? I can't answer the question because I'm not stealing jerseys. Yeah. So, <laughs> there, there are certain things though, Skip. I mean, now if the guy, if Tom Brady unforeseen were to fall on hard times and he say, well, you know, he fell like Jim Brown's ring. You remember they, someone tried to uh, uh, sell Jim Brown's right. championship ring and he's like, that was stolen. I mean, when it comes up for auction, people are like, well, how did you come to possess this? Mm -hmm. There was just a story also that uh, I just got off the phone with Michael Strahan because there was a story that his jersey got stolen from his last Super Bowl, which is not the truth. He said right after the game, he took everything off because he knows what happened. Yeah. And he immediately tucked it away and gave it to his friends and family and it's hanging up downstairs right now mm. in his basement. But he had the wherewithal to know to steal it. things get swiped here. Right, these it are valuable commodities. It happens like... Skip, when you go to the Pro Bowl, and the big thing is to trade helmets. And a lot of times, I mean, you know, you learn from mistakes. You know, you put it up under mm -hmm. the you put it up under the plane, and guess what happens? You get no helmets when you get to your location. So basically, guys, now they have to take the helmets onto the plane with them in a bag. Mm -hmm. Because I gave my helmet to Ben Coates, signed it and everything. He called me back, man. I need another helmet. I was like, Ben, I because someone stole it because mm -hmm. he put it up under. He stole three of his helmets. Mm -hmm. I, I think the wild thing of this, all of this you know, put together, is you think about how thought out this was. Again, somebody getting credentialed as yes. an international member of the media is what we're reporting, and then goes into the Patriots locker room mm -hmm. and sits and loiters and takes Tom Brady's jersey and is able to make his way out of the locker room, out of the stadium for all this time. That's a, a pretty elaborate scheme. Yeah, but they don't check your bag when you're leaving out. I mean, they see the credential hanging around his neck, and it's like, okay, he's admitted. They just let him go. Sure. Now, if he had, you know, coming in, obviously they're going to look in his bag, but they're not thinking to check his bag on the way out. And they look at your bag coming into the stadium, but not right. into the locker room. Right. Exactly. In the video, we did see, as Brady complains to the equipment guy, he says, absolutely 100%, I put it in my bag, and the equipment guy responds, we should put someone at the door and check everyone in the media. So he was on to something right. at that point. If they had done that, which a lot of the media members would not have appreciated right. as they were leaving the locker room on deadline, but maybe he would have nabbed the culprit at he that point. He probably was gone at that point, Skip. He didn't hang around. Once he maybe. got what he needed, he probably had to dip because he knew Tom Brady was going to look down and see that his jersey is not over his pads or not in his bag, right. and he's going to mm -hmm. start asking questions. And you can see Chad Steele, who I know from the Baltimore Ravens PR well guy, too, yeah. uh, and he's looking like said, Tom says someone stole his jersey. It's long gone. He's probably out of, by that time, he's probably on his way out of the stadium. Yeah. Even so, you can, it's not like you could sprint out of the locker room. Right. Right. You still have to make it like you're still, if he's posing as a member of the media, he still has to act like he's a member of the media. Okay. He still has to mm -hmm. somewhat loiter around, linger around him. Remember also, that locker room's open, but there's still players and people on right. the field, right? That goes right. on and on and on. Right. There's players at different podiums, so it's kind of easy to get lost, right. even if you leave that locker Because he could have been walking and says, well, I'm going to interview somebody at the podium, mm -hmm. because probably Tom was the last guy to get to the podium. 
So, the, you know, they bring Tom in the locker room, and then they take him go to the podium, where a lot of the lesser tier guys are already at the podium. So now he can say, well, I got, you know, I got all the information I need here. I'm going to go to one of the podiums mm -hmm. and talk to a Martellus Bennett or talk to someone. How upset would you have been if this was your, your last Super Bowl, someone took your jersey? Man, I'd be, I'd be ticked. I would be, I would be PO'd. I would, I, I would have really, 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 really been PO'd. Because, I mean, you work to get in this position and to win the game, Skip. And the, it's, it's the ultimate violation. Because someone took it upon themselves to take from you that was something that wasn't mm -hmm. given and to violate you because the locker room is, is supposed to be sacred. And that's why, you know, you frown upon guys. I mean, I've had teammates that would steal mm -hmm. and guys got released because they were stealing and got caught stealing. Yep. That's the ultimate violation. And before you to pose as the, first of all, you're posing as something you're not. And then you come in and you break the sanctity of the locker room. Man, Man. But the, the good news, this wasn't Tom's last Super Bowl winning jersey. He'll have a couple of more. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the way but he's this, playing, but probably. This might, but this might be the mo the exclamation. Right. This was yeah. 460. Yeah. Think about all the uh, overtime it's games. It's completely understandable he would be upset uh, over Tom losing should have put hands and I, and I'm sure the, they'll be adjusting the security mm -hmm. moving forward for, uh, for post-Super Bowl interviews and We will and such. have more on this as well. Yes. I'm still digging around this. Because you've had so many layers that are already crazy enough, right. i got to figure there are even crazier layers. It is, it's like a movie. After. Script, like it's you said, thanks ridiculous. so much for joining Tom us. Put hands on him. We, Tom look, put hands on <laughs> we look forward to getting more details from you on this later today. Tom thanks might for bang us. for that jersey. <laughs> no mercy. With a huge upset in the NCAA tournament, number two seed Duke lost to number seven seed South Carolina last night, 88 to 81. Duke allowed 65 points in the second half. That's the most points they've allowed in any half in the Coach K era. Vegas odds makers had the Blue Devils as a favorites to win it all when the brackets were released. Skip, how surprised are you that Duke lost? I was not surprised, mainly because I am never surprised by anything that happens in what they call madness. March. I'm sure March madness, <laughs> but it is truly, really madness. But I have no doubt that many, many people across this country are jubilant that Duke lost because I think Duke has become the second most hated team in America to my Dallas Cowboys. The Yankees are somewhere in there, but somehow it feels like Duke has sort of supplanted the Yankees as number two <laughs> overall. And no doubt, Grayson Allen had become the number one villain, in, 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 not just in college basketball, I think in any sport in America, right? Yes, Grayson yes. Allen. So I get all that, but... <sighs> I've been filling out these brackets for a long, long time. I've been in dozens and dozens and dozens of office pools. And Shannon, you know what I've invariably found out in my office pool? That the one person in the office who watched no college basketball no, has the least. best chance of picking this. Yes. And I, I'm going to give ESPN credit for this because they get, obviously, a lot of bracket racket at ESPN. But over 18 million brackets submitted to ESPN and only 18, period, Got all the Sweet 16 right? Only 18 of 18 plus mil. Are you kidding me? So that's what you're up against. So what I see is the most talented players in college basketball annually are mostly freshmen, one and done freshmen. And if you take a freshman, such as Jason Tatum, and you throw him into a strange arena at some strange starting time with strange referees, strange shooting background, and only five fouls in college basketball, which invariably gets somebody into trouble near the end of the first half, and he fouled out near the end of the game. Crazy stuff's going to happen, and upsets are going to be the norm. And I saw yesterday a lot of bad, great basketball. They're, they're all kind of average to me. It's like parity, hilarity across the board. But it's great to watch. It's a great roller coaster ride. So in Duke's case, here they were. They were the number one preseason pick. They had early injuries. Their coach, obviously, Coach K, had back surgery. They had lost three out of four, and then they lost three out of four again at the end of the season. Then they came together for an incredible run through the ACC tournament, and I liked them a lot. I thought they deserved to be a number one seed over Gonzaga. What do I know? I had them in my final four. That was the one I don't have left in my final four, obviously. But all of a sudden, Grayson Allen, Luke Kennard, and Jason Tatum all picked the same night to have a bad night. And in the first half, South Carolina shoots a woeful 20%. And Duke leads by seven. That should have been 14 17. or 20, right? And boom, here they go. I don't know. I can't explain this. South Carolina got some – they got, they start two seniors. They make 71.4% of their shots in the second half. 
They score 65 in the second half. Duke scored 51, which is a pretty good half for Duke. But they got basically blown off the floor by a South Carolina that lost to my school, Vanderbilt, during the SEC And run. lost in the first round to Alabama. Okay. Who they, lost that's, in the first that's correct. Round. That's, that's a good point. You know what they did? They lost their first game of the SEC tournament to an Alabama team that then lost the next game to Kentucky. Well, okay, so what? what? What does it mean? So they blew through the ACC tournament. They did something that's just unheard of. They won four straight nights, four in a row, mm-hmm. and it got them out. That's what it got them. So I, I don't know what to make of it. Does it mean Coach K is a, an awful basketball coach? Mm, I don't think so. Did he have a bad night? I, I, I don't think he had a bad night. I just think that Duke got caught up against a hot team in the second half and got shot off the floor. And in this tournament, it happens all the time. It does. Am I surprised? You should have asked me, am I happy? Oh, so you're a <laughs> Duke hater. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Okay. I make no bones about that. All right. I've been a North Carolina fan since 1981. How did that happen? When they lo- Remember, they lost to Indiana. James Worthy was a sophomore. Who was there? Jimmy Black. Mm-hmm. That's when Rolando Turner and Bryant, you know, mm-hmm. all those guys got hot for Coach Knight, and they won the game. So mm-hmm. I've been a North Carolina fan since 1981. Skip, when you look at this, you look at they have two five-star. We have a bunch of five-star recruits, but you look at Tatum and Giles. Mm-hmm. They missed a lot of time this year. They and when did. they got back, Jason, uh, Tatum got hot, and you're like, man, this guy looked like the number one basketball player in the country. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Coach K had to deal with his back issue. Yep. He missed time, and Grayson Allen, started, Grayson Allen started the season tripping people, and he didn't stop the entire year. <laughs> but this is why people love the March Madness, is mm-hmm. because the unpredictability of it. Yep. Because you never know. Because if South Carolina were to play Duke nine more times, they probably wouldn't win a game. But for one game, one night. You know, one you're right. I don't think they could beat him the nine other times. No. I don't. I really don't. You're right. But you get hot that one night, Skip. Mm-hmm. Even for one half. And that's it. Mm-hmm. It reminded me when you're looking at this game and I was going back and forth, I said, this looks like Villanova against Georgetown. Yep. Because everything they threw up was going in. It they, was. They, they, and some of them were a little lucky. <laughs> they were getting every bounce. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than to be good. Yep. And you mentioned, in Coach K's 37 years at Duke, he had never, mm-hmm. ever given up 65 points and a half. To put this in perspective, think about how many five-star recruits Kentucky have. They scored 65 in the entire game. South Carolina doesn't have a five-star recruit. They might not even have a three-star recruit. Mm-hmm. And they got 65 in 20 minutes against a Coach K team. They did. And, that, and a team that I considered not a great defensive team, but a pretty good one. Yeah. But the thing is, Skip, is that they have a bunch of guys. You get Tatum that's probably going to leave and go in the draft. He's going to be a high pick. You got Kennard, Grayson Allen. They're, li- they're littered with guys that's probably going to move on to the yep, NBA. No doubt. And South Carolina maybe has one that's Thornwood, who the coach has selected as SEC Player of the Year. They did. Monk got it from the AP. Yep. But Skip. I don't know. I just, I'm not even sure he's going to go places. Because yep. guess what? People are going to look at him as like, he's a senior. He's a senior. He stayed all four years. How yep. good is he? Because yep. normally when guys are good, they don't stay all four years. They <sighs> leave after their freshman or at worst case scenario, the sophomore year skip. Yep. But he stayed all four years. And so you're, you, maybe you're right. Maybe he doesn't go into the NBA. But on one night, on one given night, and this is why people love this, mm-hmm. because it's not like the NBA. It's not like uh, uh, baseball. Yep. Because you're playing four out of seven, you're playing three out of five. But on one night, the best team can be beat. Mm -hmm. Normally in a series, the best team will always win. Because, Skip, you're not going to shoot 71% and a half for for four games and win. You're not going to hit a walk-off in three of the four games that you win. That's not going to happen. So normally the team that's most talented, team that has the better coaching, the better pedigree, Mm -hmm. the better players, they normally win nine times out of ten. Okay. But that one time that that underdog team gets hot, you saw it Villanova Georgetown. You saw it NC State against uh, Houston in 83. This is what can happen, and this is why everybody loves March Madness. That is correct. So, guess what, America? One of these four teams is going to the Final Four. South Carolina or Baylor or Wisconsin, for whom I have a lot of respect, seated all the way down at eight, or Florida, a team my school, Vanderbilt, beat all three times it played them this year. One of those four teams is going to the Final Four, but that's madness, right? Yes. That's, that's how it works. And guess what, America? Eight out of nine ACC teams have been ousted from the tournament by a margin of 12.6, a margin of defeat, 12.6 points per defeat. Mm-hmm. That's not very good. 
But going into the, you know, after the, well, a week ago, yeah. did you hear anybody complain about ACC had too many teams in? No. I didn't. No. I didn't. And no one said the ACC was overrated because everybody thought, man, man, you look at Duke, you look at Carolina, you look at Louisville, you yeah. look at Notre Dame. These teams yeah. were playing well. Yeah. Granted, they play in the same conference, so they beat each other up. No one said that about the ACC being overrated. Yeah. But here we are after the first weekend, Skip. There's only one team left. And Carolina could have easily, hey, easily lost your, to Arkansas. That's your national champ. That's my national championship. And I thought Joel Berry either charged or walked. I thought he charged. And it should have been called. Yes. And Arkansas should have had the ball. Here it is. With a three point lead. Going right? the other, no, going the other way, down one. Down Arkansas one. would have been down yeah. one, going the other way. That's just a flat out charge. And not it, only, you know what happened to Arkansas in this play? Too many of the Arkansas kids just stopped, Stop. like, aren't you going to blow the whistle? And all of a sudden, he just throws up a prayer that misses long, and, and, and Kennedy Meeks is right there to tip it back in. Great. Ball game. That yep. puts you up three. That, that basically did it. So, whatever. I'm sure the world is happy because Duke, Duke is no is more. out, yes. Duke's Although out. you don't get to root against him anymore. That's right? okay. That's it's, it's, it's fun scary. to have a villain in I there know, sometimes. So yeah, well, I'll find me another villain. Long as that villain, <laughs> long as that villain is gone, I'm good. <laughs> no mercy. Hey guys, hope you loved that first debate and we have more debates coming up, but I want to bring in Skip to tell you about our friends at Parachute. Thanks, Joy. Parachute makes modern bedding for a more comfortable home. Their sheets are crafted in Europe in world-class factories with the best materials. Their bedding is 100% natural, which means no harmful synthetics, just an extremely comfortable feel. Man, my first night sleeping on parachute sheets made me feel like I was staying at a five-star hotel. High quality, a cut above. Hey, my wife was as impressed with the packaging as she was with the sheets, and now she's hooked on sleeping on those sheets. I have to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to do Undisputed, and so my sleep is precious to me. Now you can visit parachutehome.com slash undisputed to get free shipping and returns on Parachute's comfy bedding. Plus, their 60-night trial means you can test run their sheets for two whole months. If you don't love your new bedding, just send it back, no questions asked, and they'll donate the returns to Habitat for Humanity. Thanks, Skip. I actually have a couple of the parachute sheets as well, and they are amazing. They're on my bed right now. I love them. They are completely comfortable. They're amazing to sleep on. I adore them. I put them on immediately, and they are not coming off, except for when I wash them, of course. Again, thanks to our loyal listeners, and you can get free shipping and returns at parachutehome.com slash undisputed. No mercy. Lonzo Ball had a game-high 18 points, nine assists, and only one turnover in UCLA's win against Cincinnati last night. The Bruins will now play Kentucky Friday night in the Sweet 16. Skip, how impressed were you with Lonzo Ball last night? Extremely. I want to say first up, and I brought this up last Monday, Josh Jackson is going to score a whole lot of points in the National Basketball yeah. Association because his second half yesterday was also very special. But in the first half last night, Lonzo Ball was shockingly disengaged to me. He was way too unselfish to a fault. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what is up with Lonzo Ball? They're down three to a tough, gritty uh, senior late, and they, they start two seniors, two juniors Cincinnati mm -hmm. team. And Mick Cronin at halftime is throwing his chest out saying, yeah, you people keep asking about our defense. We got kids who can play, who could score. But, you know, and he's, he, he thinks he Feeling has – good about yeah, himself. He thinks he's got Lonzo on the, on the run. And – Lonzo had taken a, an awful fall against Kent State. He got submarined on the play mm -hmm. and fell on his hip. And I'm thinking, is his hip bothering him too much? Then he got asked after the game about a reported stroke that his mom had a month or so ago, like mm -hmm. last month at mm -hmm. some point. And he no commented that. So I'm thinking, is that eating at him a little bit? And so I tweeted at halftime, you got to get selfish. You got to get engaged or your team is going home because it, it is getting taken to school by this older Cincinnati team. Mm -hmm. And in the second half, Lonzo Ball took over in a way that only he can take over a, bas a college basketball game. He had 11 points, nine assists. He had none at halftime. Nine assists in the second half and added five rebounds. And he started making his three-point shot with that funky sideways, unorthodox <laughs> motion of his. And Shannon, I swear, every time he shoots it, I think that's short. But he somehow gets such push from over here, like he's got more leverage and more push, mm -hmm. and it's just an effortless little flick. 
And I think, swishes. that's short, and it swishes. And I say, how did that happen? He's got 30-foot range. He has crazy range. He can get in the lane. He can get shots for his teammates. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing the guy that I told you a week ago will be the number one pick. He's the best player in college basketball because he can make his teammates better. You like him better than Jackson? I do. I just do because he does more things. He's going to be better than Jason Kidd because Jason, I covered him when he was a first year in Dallas mm-hmm. when he was with the Mavericks, and, and I nicknamed him Ace and Kid because he had no J, and that meant no three-point shot. Or Lonzo doesn't have a mid-range J. I just have a feeling he'll figure that out right. at some point. Magic figured out some kind of a shot mm-hmm. after a while. Michael Jordan figured out a shot after right. a while. But I just think that because he can score the ball much quicker than Jason Kidd ever thought about scoring it, he's got Jason's passing vision and gift. He's got Magic's gift. He's got Stockton's gift. He's got Nash's gift. He can see the floor, throw long bounce passes up the floor. And of all those players I just named, the fastest guy with the ball going up the floor, he's got Westbrook's speed up the floor plus the passing gift that Westbrook does not have. Westbrook's had to teach himself how to get the ball to others on the run, and mostly he wants to do it himself. Right. Lonzo wants everybody to be involved. It's the best offensive team in college basketball because he's the best player. So I can't wait for next Friday night in Memphis at 9.39 Eastern time, a rematch between Lonzo Ball's team and Kentucky. That's going to be a showcase. It really is, Skip. And I, I watched a little bit of Lonzo Ball because, you know, you're hearing so much in his dad. It forced you to watch him because you want to see who is this kid that's better than Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think it's on Friday, his dad said he's better than LeBron and Westbrook. So that he, he really lost me. But I wanted to see who is this kid that his dad said is better than a mm-hmm. two-time MVP, better than a Hall of Famer and Jason Kidd. So I watched him a little bit. Skip, I like him a lot. But I like Josh Jackson also. But I will say this about Lonzo Ball. He might be the best passer to come along in college basketball since Jason Kidd. Yep. Because he's very, very unselfish. And although his shot is or- 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 orthodox, orthodox. Yep. it doesn't look pretty. But at the end of the day, it doesn't go in. Because I've seen a lot of guys with a lot of sweet, smooth strokes that clank. That's true. So, yep. and as his dad says, it might not look, it might not mm-hmm. be a thing of beauty. No. Nope. But when it hits the bottom of the net, it's real beautiful. And so it's going to be a great matchup between Kentucky because they have all these five-star recruits. UCLA went to Rupp Arena and handed it to them. I think it was 97-92. So it's going to be a very good game, Skip. And I was anxious to see how he would handle this situation. Handle when it's one game, you advance if you win, you go home if you lose because that's a different type of pressure than what he's faced all year. Now, we saw that in the uh, the Pac-10, Pac-12, whatever they call it now. We saw that in the tournament when they went against Arizona. Mm -hmm. Uh, He didn't have his finest hour, but he's he's a phenomenal talent, Skip. There's no way. And the question is, if the Lakers get the first pick, do they select him? Because you're going to have to move D'Angelo Russell or you're going to have to trade Clarkson and some of those backcourt players, Skip, because all of those guys can't play together. They can't. It's just it's just impossible. Now I you know watch- D'Angelo had a big night. Like, what do you have? 40? Forty. Yeah, but effortless listen, forty. Skip Lonzo Ball can run rings around D'Angelo as a point guard, and I I trust his character, his guts, his heart over D'Angelo's. I don't trust him. He's got talent, but he's it's more two guard talent than. Yeah, he's more, he's more of a, a scorer than a facilitator, and yeah. he's going to be. Well, that's the way these NBA point guards are now, Skip. There are no more John Stockton. There are no more Magic Johnson where guys are really trying to get their teams involved. If you look at the point guards in today's game, with the exception of maybe Connolly, all these guys will score first. You look at Kyrie drop 40. Look at Dane Lillard. He dropped 40. Oh. Uh, who, uh, uh, D'Angelo dropped 40. Mm-hmm. These guys, Isaiah Thomas, can go get you 40. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry is a point guard. He can get 40. They don't distribute the ball. Alonzo is an old-school point guard, a Magic Johnson, John Stockton type of point guard. He's going to get his team. Um, he can't score the ball as effortless as these other point guards can. But he is Mm 6'7", so he'll be able to see over all the point guards currently playing in the NBA. Um, He's a special talent. I'm anxious to see how he plays again Mm -hmm. in a winner-take-all scenario against Kentucky. Um, I think the outcome might be a little different. But, Skip, if I had the choice, I'm going to think long and hard, especially if I'm the Lakers. Do I take Josh Jackson, who's 6'8", can play both ends of the court? He can just shoot. He's got every move in the book. Did you see on Friday night, skipped the up and under? It's crazy. And he did pull the Dr. J on him. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Mm -hmm. who is this kid? And now I see why they lost in the first round of TCU. 
Okay, because but Josh suspended. has had some issues already off the court. Yep. yep. And one thing about Lonzo Ball, his dad sort of paints a different picture of Lonzo in that you start thinking Lonzo must be really full of himself. Mm -hmm. He is not full of himself. He doesn't have his dad's arrogance or mm -hmm. braggadocio or Lonzo Ball has high character, big, strong backbone, and he has supreme confidence that never comes across as arrogance to me at all. So he's sort of the flip side of his dad, and his dad doesn't seem to bother him at all. He just shrugs off. He says, he's been doing that my whole life. He's yeah. been talking like that. His dad obviously supports him. Absolutely. But, but it, it feels like Lonzo is the flip side of his dad in many ways because I, I would want him on my team. I'd want him running my show. I'd want him in my locker room. He's trustable. There's a lot you could invest in for the long haul with Lonzo Ball. Skip, I was going to go with me one of those uh, Triple B hat. What is it, Big Ball Ballers? Mm -hmm. and then it's about <laughs> Big Baller brand, I think. <laughs> well, that's what it, but anyway, $100? $100? Skip, I said, do hair come in that hat? The hat? Wow. I need to be... I wow. said, that's the the hat is $100? $100. Oh, uh, we have to... Uh, no. LeVar, you got to give us a hometown discount on wow, that. Wow, on yeah. the website? Yeah, Skip, $100 for a baseball yeah, cap. Have to ask him for one. Skip. Huh? If I was bald headed and they had hair up, does it make you smarter? When I, you I don't know what it does. Did you shoot better? For a hundred dollars, I would like to do a ninety-five dollar refund come with it or something. <laughs> I don't know about a hundred dollars for a baseball cap, Skip. Yeah, he he definitely does have a completely different personality he does. Than, than his father. He does. But Babe for Ruby. all the hype uh, Lavar's putting on him, Babe Ruth he's, 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 would have had if I was paying hundred dollars for it. That. That's a little pricey. Well, you see, Ali will be playing Kentucky on Friday night. No mercy. The Cavs set their big three, LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love, in Saturday's blowout loss on the road to the Clippers. All three played in last night's win against the Lakers. LeBron addressed missing Saturday night's game. Let's take a listen. I don't think the NBA can do anything about it. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, I mean, it, you know, it sucks, you know, that at times where, you know, certain guys have to rest, but, you know, certain guys need rest, you know, and it's, it's a long, extraneous season. And uh, the NBA does a great job of putting the schedule together as best as they can. You're going to have back-to-backs. You're going to have, you know, certain games where certain things fall on certain nights. But, you know, coaches', is, coaches job is to figure out a way that their team can compete for a championship, not compete for a game. You know, and obviously, you know, it sucks at times, you know, because certain games you only play in certain cities once or you play certain teams once on their home floor. But, you know, for me personally, I, you know, I want to play in every game. Cavs GM David Griffin got a call from the league after the game and said seven minutes after it was announced, yeah, they were not happy. I feel bad for the league. I really do. But it is what it is for us from an injury standpoint. We literally had one guy rest tonight and everybody else was reasonably injured. I don't feel like we did anything terribly egregious. Shannon, how can the NBA fix this? They can't because what if the guy's injured? Now, I remind you, Kyrie missed the fourth quarter of the game against Utah. He did. So did Kevin Love. Right now, LeBron is number two in minutes, and that's only because Kyle Lowry hasn't played in over a month. Yep. So if he were not to play, he's still eligible right now. But if he doesn't play anymore until the regular season, LeBron is going to finish number one in minutes. After going to six straight finals, LeBron James at the age of 32 will lead the league in minutes played. Whose fault is that? Coach LeBron's. Well, hold on, hold on. He's the coach. Hold on. Now, here's the Take thing. Take yourself out. He did. Huh? He took himself out Saturday night. Okay. Now, check this out, Joy. It just so happens I was going to the game on Saturday night. I was, I was 15 minutes from Staples Arena, had me a new pair of kicks, and bought me a new pair of shoes, Skip, because I wanted Braun to see them. <laughs> and come up, breaking news, the big three isn't going to play. And you turned right around? No, oh. man. I'm going to get that free food. I hit me a buffet like Eddie Lacey. I had me, oh, had some chicken wings. Had chicken wings. They had dip, they had some fruit, got me three oatmeal raisins. I had me a good old time, Joy. <laughs> had me an LED light. Where were you? In a box? Or in the media buffet? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you <laughs> ate the media food? No, no. Shannon I'm... Sharp's a media member? No, I was, I was, in, I was in a suite. <laughs> oh. Had me an LED light. When the, the Clippers did something good, it was light and going off all different colors. So you were a fake Clippers fan? No, I just had, I went to see LeBron. How many bandwagons are you on? I went to see LeBron. But LeBron wasn't playing. So, but I still went and I enjoyed it. Skip, let me tell you something. I, I, I'm going to take it from this perspective and then I, I'm going to let Skip go and then I'll come back to Skip. If you're in the Eastern Conference and you want to guarantee you will see LeBron James play at least two games, make the Eastern Conference Finals. 
He will show up to your building at least twice. If you're in the West, there's a good chance you're only going to see LeBron once. Mm. But if you want to guarantee that you're going to see him at least twice, make the NBA Finals. Mm. He'll show up to your building. Mm. Other than that, my guy, the king of Akron, is competing for championships. Mm. Now, the Clippers fans didn't have any problem that the Nuggets fans were denied two of the big three that played with uh, the Clippers. Because guess what they did, Skip? They rested DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin on Friday mm -hmm. in Denver. They did. They played them on Saturday. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear anybody complain. Now, Greg Popovich has been doing this, th this like this, like this for 10, 15 years. He was resting Duncan. He was resting Manu. He was resting Tony Parker. But no one cared because they're boring. Ain't nobody going to see them oh, on the so road anyway. Watching way. them, but even the though they king. kept winning championship after championship. But the king. Yeah, nobody but the cares. king. Yeah. You want to see uh, king. Yeah. You want to see him go behind. You see that movie he put behind his back, laid it up. Uh, oh! Wait, yeah. is this, are we talking about the same king who got blown off the floor in an NBA Finals by a record margin by the San Antonio Spurs? So, that why, guy? so why would anybody want to see him on the road if he's getting blown out by record margins in the yeah. NBA Finals? Yeah. Why would anybody want to see that guy? Yeah. Skip, there's nothing you can do about it because it was, he got an ankle injury. Now you're going to make teams lie. Mm. I don't, li don't want to lie. Okay, lie is such a harsh word. You're going to make them misrepresent the truth or give you alternative facts. Mm -hmm. Is that what you want, Skip? No. Okay, then. I do not want that. So before I answer Joy's question, two quick asides. Number one, I don't ever want to hear LeBron James complain again about how much help he needs when he has Kyrie Irving riding shotgun for him. Skip, stop Kyrie it! Kyrie, last, I know it was against the Lakers, but he, he threw down 46 on them, a lot of them from long range. And LeBron had a big night, too, but 46, you, you don't need any help if you have Skip. Kyrie, especially in the East. Skip, why, would you keep do, why do you keep doing that, Skip? Because it's just the truth, and somebody needs to speak the he truth. He said he needed a backup point guard and a backup big. He said they were top-heavy. They, okay, they scored top on Top-heavy will work in the Skip. East. Top-heavy might work in the finals no. because they're going to be as rested as anybody. The big three scored 101 they did. of the 125. Mm -hmm. They're very top-heavy. But they're not going to score 101 every night, Skip. No, they're not. And Kyrie's going to need a blow. LeBron's going to need a, a blow. Kyrie's a bad man. What, you put the he king? He's a bad what's man. Big, what's Woo. bad in the king? Woo. Would you rather be a bad man or a king? I'd because rather the be king a bad is, man. The, king, the, the is, king is the king because of the bad man. The king can send for that bad yeah. man yeah. and says, be gone. Yeah. So Banish it. Back to which night was it you went to the Staples? Was Saturday. It Saturday night? Yeah, Saturday night. The good old time. I must admit, I was a little disappointed in LeBron James that he didn't go ahead and suck it up and say, I'm going to play, nope. even, even though his two co-stars were not going to play, nope. because he could have cemented his MVP case that you keep making for him if by himself, nope. the quote-unquote best player on the planet, had beaten the big three of the Clippers at their place. Is he not the best player on the planet? Yes or no? Truth serum. I'll give you that. Okay. So why didn't he play on Saturday night? He was tired. I don't know. He, tired. he was tired. Okay, so he was tired. I'm going to give him that. I'm not going to condemn him for that. He does play way, way, way too many minutes. But I think he's looking at the Eastern Conference playoffs thinking, I'm not going to have to play many minutes in the playoffs, so wh wh why shouldn't I just go ahead and play now as I try to win an MVP showing you I can have triple doubles too? Yeah, he tries. Come, come on, he's, they're going to sweep through. What, how many games would that be? Four, four, and four, so that would be well, 12 games. So they'll be 12-0 and 0 when they get to the playoffs. No, they will not. Yeah, they yep. will. You know they they'll will. They'll be like 12-4. and four. Back to the question. I am with you on this, and it's driving me nuts because I have been racking my brain for a solution to this problem because it is a glaring problem. I feel sorry that ABC had back-to-back -back games on Saturday night that the bottom fell out of. And I feel sorry for ABC that they gave how much money? Is with well, TNT? it's nine years, $24 billion. $24 billion. That just happened. ABC and ESPN and Turner gave $24 billion? And they wind up with those two games? And again, you can't control injuries. And well, stop were... putting back-to-back. -back. Put, stop putting back-to-backs. Okay. Like okay. Doc said, I, don't put a back-to-back -back on the I, I got it. I, I get what Doc said. But the point is, you have to have some back-to-backs. You can try to juggle it as much as you can. But at some point, if the owners, they're going to say, if we're going to pay you this much money, you have to play 82 times or we're not going to be able to pay you this much. So now we're back to the next collective bargaining, which could lead to a lockout or a strike over this very issue. But I can't fix it because you're right. 
you're either you're going to make them lie about injuries. Right. And I'm going to be honest about this. I haven't always loved Greg Popovich's method about resting players because trust me on this. I root like crazy for him every year, and it seemed like every other year he rests them to a fault. He's he's at the root of this quote unquote evil, yes. as you said. He started all this. Yep. And it's why Lamarcus Aldridge signed with the Spurs. So it's it's like a free agent uh, magnet. Yes. To come to Popovich. Great selling point. Yeah. Yeah. Because he says uh, I'll. You're not going to play more than 30 minutes a night. I'm going to have you fresh for the playoffs. He'll also maybe not have you peaking for the playoffs because you haven't played enough in the month of late March or early April to get ready for the playoffs. And a lot of times against the Clippers going back two years ago, I thought they came out a little flat in the playoffs because they just rested too much. In fact, they were resting so much they blew the last game of the regular season mm-hmm. at the Pelicans yep. when there was no DeMarcus Cousins there. It was just Anthony Davis. You see what Anthony Davis is doing now? Well, Ooh, he's cook, tearing it up. Cook, cook it. Well, but Skip, here's the thing. If old-timers, old basketball players and fans stop saying back in the day, Michael Jordan played 82, uh, Larry Bird and this. Carl Malone, he just said it yesterday. It's not back in the day. It's a new era. And so not only are th- have things changed as far as free agency, teams are not the only one putting teams together. The players are putting pl- teams together. Mm-hmm. And as Tyron Lu said, Tyron said, look, I-, I get it. Dave Griffin said, I get it. But we're trying to win a championship, mm-hmm. not have fans. And I-, and I feel bad for him. I really do. Because I wanted to see LeBron. I wanted to see it bad. I had me a new pair of shoes. Joy, did I tell you I had a new pair of shoes? How is LeBron going to see your shoes? Because I go, because I had these passes I could get to walk down on court. Uh-huh. I, and I was going to say... Abusing your media privileges. Whoa, whoa, skip, whoa, skip. <laughs> Wait, hey, had he new media shoes? members are not supposed to be super fans of the people they're covering. I'm in the media? Right? Yeah. I, I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, That's no, debatable, sort of, that's, but... Yeah. 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 I, I think so. Skip, I get yeah. it. But at the end of the day, are we going to judge LeBron by how many people got the chance to see him play? Or how many titles he actually No doubt. Won. I'm with you on this. I agree. Body key. Did the uh did the shoes have all the rhinestones on them? Like the a brand new pair of Jordy's bad too. Oh, Jordy's bad. I'm gonna have to wear them, Skip. I, so now since LeBron didn't see them, I got to wear them on TV so the entire world can see them. You're gonna save them for the finals. Yep. I do feel bad for you the fans though, too. but I don't, I don't like when the fans, you know post stuff and, and ridicule the players. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, it's a risk that you take when you see LeBron on the road. But yep. it, it's, you know, people spend a lot of money and bring their kids to see, they, 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 to see they LeBron do. and the, and and the Cavs. Here's my final point about the old timers saying, back in the day, I played 82 straight games. Somehow, they didn't seem to get hurt playing 82 games. Right. Somehow, I think sometimes, and you might agree with this, given your history, mm-hmm. Sometimes you can plant seeds of doubt in your mind that you're playing too many minutes and then you do get hurt because yep. you're trying not to get hurt. Carl Malone, Jordan, I know Jordan had one foot injury, but right. generally they were right. incredibly Carl Malone was incredibly indestructibly healthy. And I don't believe the guys back then maybe there's there is such a thing skip is working out too much. Because if you think about it, Skip, these guys basically train year-round now. Yeah. I mean, they don't really give their chance. Yeah, their you got to give chance. your body some rest. LeBron has been to six straight finals, and you throw in the two Olympics. That's a lot That's a lot of wear and tear. And travel wasn't the same back no. then either. No. So. But they got, they got private jets now. But LeBron, I know if you're tired, you take another little sabbatical. Hey, don't worry about you this. You know where he goes on, on vacation? He go to Miami sometime. Mm-hmm. Mm. Come mm. see you. He coming out of L.A. He got places. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm looking for a house right now. Skip. I might really? move in LeBron's neighborhood. Really? Well, down the street, around mm-hmm. the corner, about LeBron's six miles away. You, you know what? You, you better ask for a raise before you do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Down the street, six miles. <laughs> <laughs> no mercy. Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio says Jerry Jones may be hesitant to release Tony Romo because Jerry doesn't want Romo to sign with the cross-state Houston Texans. Florio also suggests Jerry Jones could be worried that an increased interest in the Texans could hurt the city of Dallas's interest in the Cowboys. We're joined by Chris Carter. Chris, what happens now? Well, for one, Jerry's just overplayed his hand. (laughs) You know, he's been bragging about Tony Romo since Tony started practicing during the season, which... Made Skip a little nervous. He thought he was going to put Tony Romo in front of Dak mm-hmm. <laughs> into the lineup. Mm-hmm. So now he's been trying to tell everyone, oh, man, Tony Romo looks better than ever. This is during the season. Oh, Tony Romo can do the same thing that Tom Brady. Didn't he say all these things? He did. Now oh, you, ought to see him in you ought to see him in practice. Ooh, mm-hmm. the way he lined up that defense. After he lo- they lost to Green Bay, he said he could have made every throw that Aaron Rodgers made it, yesterday. Yeah. Now, privately, a couple weeks ago, did he not tell Tony Romo he was going to release him? 
I, I don't think he did. Honestly. Well, why did Tony make the announcement? I, I think Tony's people leaped to the conclusion he was going to be released, and Jerry didn't like it that they jumped the gun on it. That's my two cents on it. So right. you don't think, so you don't, to Chris's point, you don't think Jerry Jones told Tony, I'm going to do right by you and release you, but you do not go sign with Washington. Why would he do that, Skip? He never told Tony when he was going to be released. He just told him, you're not going to be on the roster next fall. Okay. That, that was as far as it went. Yeah, so with Tony Romo, it, it's quite, it, it's simple. Jerry's trying to control the situation. He's overplayed his hand. The two teams that have the most interest, Denver and Houston, know he's going to be, re be released. So that's removed some value from it. And there, there's only a little bit of a mystery. Eric Mangini is the only person I've really heard on the airways as far as an analyst the last six, eight weeks say that I don't know why they're releasing them now. It does them no good. They, get, they can make the June 1st designation. They do get some cap relief for this year and next year, splitting it into two. But from the <laughs> team's perspective, with the little bit of money that they're saving, they're better keeping him on the roster until the summer, if not the fall. So in Coach Mangini, I'm starting to lean towards Coach Mangini's side that Tony Romo is a valuable asset, but they're not going to be able to get anything for him. Houston's already traded their second, second round pick to get Ross Osweiler out of town. Right. So they only have a certain number of picks. And when you know the guy is going to be free, OTAs don't start for another four and a half, five weeks. Correct. So that's when the guys come into town. Yep. You implement the new system to your new players and everything. So there really is no pressure. Jerry wants to get something because he knows he's got to upgrade that defense and replace all the players he's lost in free agency. Mm -hmm. So I would hold on to him and let, until I can get a six-round pick. If I don't get a six-round pick, I'll hold on to him till the summer. You know the reason why? Because my relationship with him ain't that important. Now, I know he's made it important, yep. but to me, the Dallas Cowboys and making them the best football team, mm -hmm. that should have been the number one thing. You can't make everyone happy. Yep. Tony can tell him, okay, I'm not going to go to Washington. I'm not going to play in the same division. But you can't tell me I can't go across the state. Right. Listen, when you tell me you can't work for me, you're going to have to come to some type of resolve when I get me a job. Okay? See, Skip? Don't be trying to tell me where I can play. If you don't want me to play for you, don't be trying to tell me where I'm going to be able to play ball. We've all been in this situation before. Mm -hmm. yeah, Different contracts, pro career, TV career. You know something? I don't want you here. You know something? Well, you better be happy with where I end up. Yeah. Because I'm a football player, and if I have to go across the state, because that he might have a better chance, the, first, the best chance he's had his whole career in Houston than he ever had in Dallas, because he never got to really play on this team. Nope. With, this, with the rookie class that they have. Mm -hmm. So, Jerry, you can't mm -hmm. control the world. I know you like to, but you can't control the world. You overplayed your hand, and he's not going to get anything for Tony Romo. Chris. Coming to a bar in L.A. soon, Shannon and Skip. Because <laughs> he going to drive Skip to Drake. And Robo, oh. if, Robert, <laughs> if Tony Robo is on that roster in June, not June 1st or 2nd, because that's the cut designation. But if it goes into July, if I'll it goes, into, if, if, if it goes to August, get a drink. <laughs> that bang will start coming. You know, got a boom right here. Start coming out. Skip, here's the thing. <laughs> I know for certain. Now, I, don't, I know Rick Smith not as well as I know John Elway. John Elway is not trading for $24.7 million cap hit. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Right. And the little bit that I do know Rick Smith, I don't believe he's trading for it either. Well, Rick Smith's job might be on the line, too, because what he did with the Brock Osweiler thing, I'm pretty certain that the ownership, they got a lot of pressure on the front office to get this right. Yes. <laughs> now, giving up $24.7 million, skip that contract. That's the albatross. Whether or not you believe he can stay healthy or not, you got two years at faulted. Nine million, well, 50, because it's 24.7, and I think it's 24.3 mm -hmm. next year. So yep. basically, you got 49 mil yep. on your cap for a guy that might be gone in 60 seconds. And everybody keeps telling you, oh, Tony Romo's the answer. But if I'm going back and look, I go back and look at the resume, I'm like, okay, he's the answer. Okay, I still don't see no NFC playoff appearance, NFC title game playoff experience. I don't see no Super Bowl playoff experience. You keep talking about he's a, a Peyton Manning 2.0. Peyton Manning had MVPs and Super Bowl experience, and so did Brett Favre, and mm -hmm. so did all the. Mm -hmm. Whoa! So, 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 what, what, what am I based? <clears throat> what, what makes me so sure? Why am I so convinced that Tony Romo can do in Houston and Dallas, in Denver, what he couldn't do in Dallas? Now, the last three times we saw him got hit, 
between, behind three all pros. He got three, the NFL says, the writer said, he has three of the five best offensive linemen in the NFL. True. And three times he's been hit, mm -hmm. and they did this. Okay, but I can hark back to 2014 when they didn't have to go get him. Okay, what about He got beat up one time in a game against Washington, and he survived all the way through two playoff games, the second of which they also should have won at Green Bay. So, back to the, the, the crux of the problem here. Help me out here. Does Jerry Jones not believe in his heart of hearts that Tony Romo is highly capable of winning a Super Bowl? Does he believe that? Yes. yes. Is that yes. the essence yes. of this? Yes. Okay, Absolutely. so we all agree with that, yes. right? That leaves him two choices. He can either keep him or... To me, if you're going to do right by Cowboy Nation, which is his responsibility here as the owner and general manager of this football team, then you need to trade him to a non-contender, a non-threatening team, such as Jacksonville or San Francisco or maybe the Jets. That's, that's what you would do. That's what most people would do with no relationship with that quarterback. But that wouldn't be doing right. Okay, that's not doing right. And I'm tired of hearing do right because we're about to do wrong here. Yes. Right? Okay, so Jerry Jones, remember, Paid this man 108 total million dollars, 55 upfront guaranteed, and he got two games out of him over the last. I'm sorry, five games out of him over the last two years. Yes, he is still under contract to that owner for two more years. Yep. So this is Jerry's call. Period. End of story. Yeah. And I think Jerry got woke up by the fact that Houston got out from under Brock Osweiler, and, yes. and Jerry sat back and said. They wait start, a second. They start making plans. I, I'm, wait a second. I'm going to give this, this guy that I believe in to that team, these cowboy wannabes down in Houston with the Jerry wannabe as the owner, and that's the God's truth on both counts. Yeah. It's okay. You know, but, but you could put them over the top. If he managed to hit the lottery and stay healthy for a year, Ooh. could he win the Super Bowl in Houston? Sure, Ooh, you that just said. Ooh, that it, would, would it would hurt beyond hurt. Ooh, that would hurt. It would be the all-time <laughs> haunting experience for Jerry Jones. He would never get over that if Houston went and won next year's Super Bowl. So I'm back to Freddy Krueger Romo. He's back again, and this is my gut feeling. I've said it from the start. Jerry's going to keep him on the roster. They're going to play poker with everybody, and nobody's going to fold their hand, and Jerry's not going to fold his either, which means they will go to camp, and he'll finally tell Tony, mm. I'm going to give you a 50-50 shot at winning this job from Dak Prescott. Come on. And as I told Shannon to open the show, 50-50 in Jerry's mind is 51-49 for Tony Romo. That's just me because he believes more in Tony Romo. If you put Jerry on the lie detector right here, right now, which quarterback could win next year's Super Bowl faster for you, Tony Romo or Dak Prescott? Again, health would all, all yeah. being equal. Right. He, he would say Tony Romo. You ain't going to put him on no lie detector. Okay. It tells you yeah. because he's the only owner that's in this situation that would have not jettisoned the quarterback. Right. When you got a rookie quarterback right. that played as well as he did on a rookie contract, and mm -hmm. you have an albatross of yeah. a $24.7 million cap hit, and you're going to keep that on because you – look, Skip, I got a chance to win the lottery. Okay. But that don't mean I'm going to buy a house in Malibu because I got a chance to win it. So, okay, you trade for Tony Romo or you keep... There ain't no guarantee that Tony Romo is going to lead you to a... What, CeCe? What do we... Can I ask you a question, CeCe? You, you watch the game, too. You watch a lot more game film than I do. Everybody talks about 2014. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see him at all in 2016. And I only saw him five times in 2015. But what about the other years? What happened to those, those? Did they play the Super Bowl in those years? Yes, they did. And if this was Brett Favre, if this was Peyton Manning, or this was Tom Brady, we could draw that conclusion. Yes, yes. We would skip over a year. Yes. And I mean, we are in we 17, right? Yes, yes. When you tell me what were my highlights from 2014, man, I can't remember back that far. Not in this world of sports that is a what can you do for me now. I used it as the eulogy. You know, when somebody passes away, no matter what they've done to themselves or someone else, We'll pick out the highlights of their life. Boy, he was, ooh, he was that. a great yes. guy. He wasn't no great. He just got in the shootout. Uh, listen, mm -hmm. I've given proper instruction. <laughs> Something happened to me, just sing Amazing Grace and put me on in the ground. Yep. All hey, right? Don't yep. lie. I'll say, if you get out, I'm going to raise up if you lie on me. So be tell the truth. I but skip, you. I'm sorry. I, I, if Brock Osweiler, if the Houston Texans. They're getting ready to ruin your summer, man. I, I, I'm, it's I, ruined already. <laughs> I, I see it coming. I, I told Skip, I talked to a few people that's, that's very well that know say that if the Houston Texans had waited another two hours, Jerry Jones would have, would have released Tony. But once he saw that Brock was trading, Maybe. but mm. Skip, still, even though. Now, if you redo his contract and you package a second-round pick with Tony, somebody going to take it. 
because yes. you're going to give up a second round pick and a redid contract to take a fifth round pick. Oh, yeah, somebody will take Tony Romo mm -hmm. then, but not at 24.7 mil. So I prematurely celebrated on this show on the day it was announced breathlessly <laughs> that Romo was going to be released. And on the same day, I believe, word broke that Josh McCown was visiting Dallas. And I thought, what, the, what a perfect scenario for next year. Dak Prescott with the ultimate mentor behind him, Josh McCown, who can step in and win a couple of games for you if need be, and he will be no threat to Dak, and he will help show him some more of the ropes that maybe Tony couldn't quite show him because there was some conflict and some yeah. s some competition between I, them. Right? I, I'll teach you everything. I'll teach you everything you know, but I won't teach you everything. I, I know. That, no. is, that is exactly <laughs> right. It's always going to be So, that way. guess what? I'm now reading that Josh McCown has visited the Jets, and it sounds like it's imminent that Josh McCown is going to sign with the Jets. Well, that's another telltale sign that Romo is going to be stuck on this roster, in my view. And, and by the way, what is Tony Romo's heart of hearts goal here? He would love to finish his career with the Dallas Cowboys. His family loves Dallas. He's a Dallas guy. He... he his he's got one kid on the way, but they're going to have three kids in Dallas. She has Dallas roots, so why not? What, what, why wouldn't he want to stay in Dallas and finish it out? As I said earlier, he's loved right now. Yeah. You win a Super Bowl, you become revered. And that's what Roger Staubach, that's what Troy Aikman, they've had some, I mean, Danny White was a really good quarterback, Skip, but he's not thought of because he didn't win. Mm -hmm. he, look, they love Emmett, they love Michael, they love all the guys, but it's something about when the quarterback, and Jerry, you keep talking about Look, the Mavericks won the NBA title in 2011. They still did not draw the Cowboys. No. The Avalanche can win three World Series. The Nuggets can win four NBA titles. That's true. The Broncos are the draw. They now, are. maybe in Boston, it flipped back and forth between the Red Sox yeah, I agree. And, mm -hmm. and the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you're in towns like <clears throat> Dallas, yep. or yeah. the state of Texas, mm -hmm. or Denver, no, 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 no. Nothing trumps football. Well, Skip, I know this is a nightmare for you, but maybe the no, silver no. lining is uh -oh. if Romo stays on the <laughs> roster, then Dak will have to play for his, you know, his job all season. That worked out pretty well but last what, year. You know what? He, he did respond to the challenge. Yeah. He, but, but he what steps up. What happened if he struggles one time? Oh, no, he's going to struggle. No, I mean, that's you second, know, The second you year that. lose. We have to leave it there, Chris. Southern Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining us. No mercy. This is the Skip and Shannon Undisputed Podcast, where we're delivering you an unscripted, unfiltered, undisputed version of the biggest topics of the day show. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook at Undisputed on FS1, follow on Twitter at Undisputed, and catch us at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, Monday through Friday on FS1. You can find us on Channel 219 on DirecTV, 150 on Dish. Thanks for tuning in after an exciting weekend. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. I hope your week is off to a great start. Join us again tomorrow. Fox Sports, one of one.